Yo, what's up? My name's Petrowski, and welcome to my guide on top 10 Pokemon that every Pokemon player should have. These Pokemon will range from utility Pokemon to money makers to PVM Pokemon to PvP access Pokemon, etc. etc. No matter your types of playstyle, something in here should be wildly useful, and I hope it's helpful to you. If a Pokemon in here does give you an idea or spark something into your brain, make sure to leave a like on the video to let me know you appreciated it or dislike if I don't offer you anything helpful today. And if you want to see more videos like this one, guides, news content, fun, casual, long-term, long-form content or challenges, subscribe to my channel and ring the bell notification. I do upload Pokemon videos every single day, as well as stream usually Monday through Thursday at 12 p.m. ET on Twitch and on YouTube. Links down below. Well, let's go ahead and jump into the video. First things first, everybody needs a shiny Rampardos and a shiny Shuckle. Just kidding, obviously. Number one is going to be HM friends, specifically one to two different HM friends. I have Swag Teeny here and my boy Joiner Lucas. Everybody asked me why I named him this. I think he just looks like Quagsire. I don't know why. Can't explain it. That's my thoughts. There we go. We've got Dive, Dig, Waterfall, and Rock Smash. And on Swag Teeny over here, my 2013 Pokemon that I named Swag Teeny back in 2013 and never fixed Surf, Fly, Strength, and Waterfall. Dragonite can learn pretty much every single HM in the game except for things like flash or like weird things like that it's also you maybe want to have like a rock climb pokemon in your pc as well you want to have one to two hm friends that cover all of the hms that you need and not even just hms but things like dig dig is a really useful utility move that will get you out of dungeons or out of caves if you're doing specific shiny hunting or maybe going for the pokedex but you really want whatever HM Pokemon you need that also interside with your Ocarinas. If you don't know, Ocarinas are items that allow you to use HMs without actually having a Pokemon that knows those HMs in your party. So you can kind of do two HM friends and then have like a couple Ocarinas and then you'll pretty much have access to every single HM in the entire game. You can go wherever you need to. You'll never be stopped because you forgot strength, etc, etc. Next up, number two on our list is catching Pokemon. There's many different options for this. You can do something like a Breloom, which is generally seen as the best catching Pokemon in the game. Everyone should definitely have one of these at some point, but you could also get yourself a Smeargle, which we'll cover in more detail on slot number three. A Parasect with the Damp Hidden ability is wildly useful to essentially get a Spore False White Pokemon and a catching Pokemon with the Damp ability. Both of those two things in one slot is super nice. You can also so if you're really early game, you can do a Butterfree with Compound Eyes and Sleep Powder. Compound Eyes is going to raise the accuracy of Sleep Powder drastically and take it from a 75% accuracy move up to 97.5, making Butterfree a decent sleeper. However, that's for like super early game Kanto or super turbo early game in other regions if you're trying to get a sleep Pokemon, but really you want to avoid Butterfree. That's for like turbo beginners. Uh, even be turbo beginners, you probably should do like a Parasect or a Paris in Mount Moon. The issue is it's going to be a really slow Pokemon during the storyline. Lines. Really, the best end game result and something that everybody should go for is a Breloom. A Breloom with Spore, False Swipe, and then some sort of maybe HMs or other utility moves, uh, and then going a Toxic Orb and Poison Heal. Having that sustain on Breloom is going to be more important than Technician. Usually, you'll be able to do plenty of damage anyway, as long as you EV train it and make sure it has decent enough IVs. You don't need incredible IVs on a catching Pokemon. As you can see, this is my catching Pokemon that I've used for pretty much everything for a super long time, only 20. 20 attack, one defense IV, like doesn't really matter. Not you want to go for you should go for probably a plus attack nature that isn't brave. Something like naughty, lonely, or adamant is probably ideal, but I do not have that. It's not really a huge deal. This can work totally fine. Just a level 100 Breloom is a little difficult to get in anyways, since you have to make uh, get 1.6 million XP. This is one of the slowest leveling Pokemon in all of Pokemon. Versus the average Pokemon usually only needs around 1, 1 million XP to reach level 100. It kind of depends. I don't even have an example to show you guys really quick. But here's my Rampardus, for example. Level 97, almost level 100. And this thing only has... It's going to need like 600k XP. Like this thing is going to need so little XP to get to level 100 versus this. This is a... Like this is... Breloom's equivalent to leveling three different Ramparduses to level 100. Is a funny way to think of it. Catching Pokemons are wildly helpful for things like Alpha Pokemon, for things like catching Pokemon for profit. You're pretty much always catching Pokemon within Pokemon. They do a lot to make that the main gameplay loop. 
Next up, I thought this Pokemon deserved its own slot since it's so unbelievably versatile and pretty much streams utility. You have Smeargle. Smeargle has many different builds. I personally own six different variants of Smeargle, and that's still not enough. I still need more because this Pokemon can do so many different things. As you can see here, here is a good example of just four different Smeargles that I have. Now, I will say I, I no longer need this one after the Johto update. This used to be used to Shiny Hunt Coughing because you would need an imprison self-destruct Pokemon with also access to extreme speed or, or some sort of move to just kill off the horde but you had to imprison the self-destruct move because otherwise with reactive gas shiny coughing could still boom explode itself and that's not a good thing same with this hop up down here you needed a shiny you think you still need this in certain hunts but it kind of depends you needed a d hop -ipper, a smear girl specifically built just to shiny hunt hop up one of the most dangerous shinies to hunt in all of Pokemo since it has rage powder and memento so you would use imprison to lock it out of those two moves and then take out the rest and just try to catch the hop it Having Smeargles specifically built for one shiny hunt is sometimes something you have to do. It can be avoided a lot of the times. For example, like Ralts or Abra, obviously shinies with teleport. You could bring an arena trap Pokemon or things like that. But some Pokemon, you kind of need a really, really specific build that has moves that only Smeargle can learn. Next up, we have Soak Smeargle. This is one of the most useful ones that I recommend a ton. Soak, Spore, False Wife, Sweet Scent. Now, why is Soak good? Soak is used to turn ghost types into water types so that allows you to false swipe them to catch them easier and then it also allows you to turn grass types into water types which then allows you to spore them so it essentially makes difficult pokemon to catch a lot easier to catch especially against alphas soak is super super nice now Next up, we also have our sort of PVM utility Smeargle, Surf to AoE kill hordes, Spore false swipe to catch a shiny, and then Payday to make some Pokeyen along the way. Sometimes I'll do Payday with him and make some moves like that, but it really, really depends. Um, there's so many different Smeargle builds, as you can see. There's so many ways to do it. You can even learn legendary moves on Smeargle. Like I've seen Smeargles with V-Create on the GTL. Now, those aren't necessarily super useful in PVM, but they're really, really fun, and if you want to collect stuff like that, uh, it's up to you. You. it might be it might be worth going for i can go ahead and search it v creates smeargle let's see if there are any there's some for 20k v create some of them have all the legendary moves sometimes it's really really cool to see uh like this one let's check this one out Psy Strike, Secret Sword, V Create, Judgment, all these very specific moves on very specific one on a smeargle it's cool to see and collect I know I've spent a lot of time on slots one, two, and three, but now it's time for slot number four, which is just a damp Pokemon. A damp Pokemon is just always nice to have in case of you accidentally running into a self-destructing or exploding shiny Pokemon or a Pokemon you want to catch, etc., etc. It's just a safety precaution. Damp Pokemon are pretty much always nice to have on a shiny hunt, even if you don't expect to be running into an explosion shiny. A good example that I always give of this is I used to do times five horde hunting at Lickitung and Wobbuffet in Cerulean in cave because I really wanted a shiny Lickitung or a Wobbuffet. One day, I accidentally took one step to the left and encountered an Electrode. It's Cerulean Cave. Those are there. And then I realized if that Electrode was shiny, it could have exploded on me, and I, it definitely would have, and I would have had no way to catch it unless I Master Ball, because I didn't have my damp Pokemon. So ever since I noticed that, I take my damp Pokemon to a lot more locations, including Cerulean Cave. But that's pretty much it for that. Damp Pokemon are pretty simple. So that's number four covered. On to number five, Payday Meowths and Payday Pokemon. Now, Meowth is pretty much the best go-to one. You can also do things like Munchlax, but you really, really want Payday Pickup. This is wildly important, and this is why I don't use Payday Smeargle anymore as much. That used to be a strat that I used to use, but not really anymore with, with Pickup. It's just so important. Now that the data has come out and the stats have come out, Pickup is going to make you most of your money within the hour versus Payday. When I used to do a lot of Payday Pickup at Dragon Spiral Tower, still a really good location to do it. You'll probably make around 120k Pokemon per hour for a very brain-dead AFK and grindy method to also have a chance at a Shiny Dratini. Now there's times 5 Horde Dratini spots in Johto, so keep that in mind, but it's still a very good, decent AFK brain-dead moneymaker method. Um, 
Payday Pickup. With Pickup, you'll make around like 70k Pokemon per hour, but with Payday, you own like 50k of it. So like together you make 120k, but if you were doing Payday without the Pickup ability, you'd only be making like 50k Pokemon per hour. It's shocking to see how much of the money is actually made via Pickup versus the Payday itself. If you don't know, I probably should explain this. Payday is a move that grants you item, it grants you uh, Pokemon based on the level of the Pokemon you're killing. So if you kill a wild level 50 Pokemon, you get 500 Pokeyen. It's times 10 or whatever the math is. So times 10 of that. So 500 Pokeyen. And then pick up, we'll pick up random items around those locations. I do have specific guides on pretty much every single topic I'm covering today as well. So if you have any more questions beyond this, if I talk about this, just Google Pokemo Payday Pickup Guide. And I'm sure a video of mine will pop up explaining this in more detail and explaining locations as well. If I ever talk about anything in a video of mine and questions pop into your head that aren't answered in that exact video, usually Googling those exact questions will find videos of mine answering those questions. But if not, please let me know in the comments and always communicate and let me know, hey, I don't really know what's going on here. I couldn't find a videos, video of yours. Could you please explain this to me? And I really do appreciate polite asking or just uh, asking really good questions that haven't been made into a video yet. Next up, number six on our list is going to be a full gym rerun team. Now, I am not going to explain what a gym rerun is in detail here. I have two very, very in-depth guides on my channel that do that. But essentially, a TLDR, gym runs are pretty much the best moneymaker in Pokemon. It's where you rebattle the gym leaders in a double battle format. It's very, very difficult. You, I really recommend going with this specific sort of team. And once again, I have a specific guide breaking down this team uh, on my channel, multiple guides of it actually. And this team is really brain dead and really easy to get going once you learn the route, but you have to learn the route. I really recommend Every single player in Pokemon should be doing gym runs. It's so good. You can only do them once per day, which is what balances them. But essentially, if you do your gym rerun every day, you don't have to often do much Pokey and making after that. Me personally, I do my gym run once a day, every day, and then I just shiny hunt. And that's pretty much what I do in Pokemon. That's what I enjoy to do. I get my money making out of the way. It's sort of like a daily chore. Some people like to go more advanced, make better teams, more specific teams, go for world record runs. If you're into that, that's awesome and really, really cool. I personally, I rock a pretty brain dead casual team that allows me to stroll through pretty much every single gym, blast through them all without thinking. I can stream it. I can talk to chat. I can hang out, make 300,000 Pokemon per hour. There are other teams that make 400k per hour. If you would like to do that, I encourage it. But this team should make around 300k Pokemon per hour and you just make a lot of money. Really brain dead, really easy. Once you learn the strategy, getting into it and learning it's a little intimidating, but once you learn it, it's just going through the motions and it's pretty simple. And it's just the best Pokemon, Poke Yen moneymaker probably in the entire game. It's just so consistent. 300,000 pure yen every single day is so nice. You'll pay for your gym, your whole team within two days, easily peasy. Maybe two to three days, you'll make profit by then. And everybody should be aiming for this. People always ask, hey, what's the first thing I should buy or look forward to as a, as a Poke Yen goal when playing Pokemon? Easily gym rerun team everybody should have a gym rerun team once you get all regions done you want to start doing gym runs it's going to just it blow your mind at how much pokey you can bring in on to number seven it's time for Jordan lucas again it's funny i keep bringing him back but it's a good example of how a lot of these slots a lot of these utilities and types of pokemon you need can actually be fulfilled by one or three or like multiple pokemon can do multiple of these roles which is super nice so what I want to talk about for number seven is utility moves. These aren't HM moves. These are utility moves. Things like Dig, things like Sweet Scent, and things like Teleport. These are the three specific ones that I want to talk about that are super, super useful. Teleport is a lot better than Fly in most cases whenever you're doing grinding. If you're doing EV training, XP training, shiny hunting, whatever it may be, Teleport is better. So I'm going to go ahead and show you. Right here, if I fly to the Safari Zone gate, it puts me outside of the PC. That's really good, really awesome. But if I teleport back to the Safari Zone gate, it puts me right in front of Nurse Joy, which saves me this amount of time from walking and opening the gate. It's not that much time, but that adds up. Over an EV training, over an XP training, over a shiny hunt especially, you end up saving so much time from having a teleport Pokemon in your party. It's absolutely crucial and pretty easy to get. Now, Dig Pokemon are a good thing to have as well. I don't recommend ever buying a Dig Ocarina. It's kind of a waste unless you're a collector, but having a Dig Pokemon is super nice. You can put it on like a damp Pokemon or something of the sort. And then Sweet Scent. Sweet Scent is just... One of the most important, crucial mechanics in all of Pokemon. If you don't know, you can use Sweet Scent to summon times five hordes. I can go ahead and show you really quick down here. 
Uh, it's the best way to XP train, EV train, shiny hunting, doing anything efficiently is always going to be done with Sweet Zen. It summons times five hordes of Pokemon like this. It's so much faster. You get way more XP, way more EVs, and just see way more Pokemon in terms of shiny hunting to use Sweet Zen. It's just, you need a Sweet Center. Uh, you need to have a Sweet Zen Pokemon that knows it, keybind it, and give it a PP Max. PP Max is crucial. It's going to allow you to Sweet Scent for longer without having to heal that via the PC or with very expensive of Lepa Berries over time. All right, on to number eight, a pretty under talked about one. Shout out to best friends in game. Yeah, he's number eight for sure. Uh, Spirit Tomb is here. So, a high level ghost type Pokemon. This is another safety measure comparable to Damp Quagsire. A high level ghost type Pokemon to help you take care of Pokemon with takedown, double edge, final gambit, etc. Those shiny Pokemon with those uh, sort of recoil moves or moves that uh, are going to kill themselves like final gambit in one shot. Ghost type Pokemon help out tremendously they will essentially just miss they won't hit the recoil it'll be awesome however keep in mind do not use ghost type pokemon against pokemon like mianfu mianxiao shinies with high jump kick or even jump kick that is going to be brutal you're going to kill your shiny on accident so keep in mind don't bring ghost types to those or don't use ghost types for those high jump kick users however high level ghost type pokemon for things like Basculin, double edge takedown like even like you know tauros if you're not sure whether the Pokemon has it, usually you can check in the Pokedex. Like let's say, for example, Tauros, I'm hunting it here below this location. We can see that it, they are around level 24 to 26. We can go to his moves and see around, what does he have? He has Scary Face, Leer, Stomp. Does it have any recoil? Horn Attack, yeah, no moves with recoil. So it should be totally fine. If you're still worried about it, you can bring it just in case. Like It's kind of one of those things where it's like, okay, every time I go shiny hunt any Pokemon, I bring a Spirit Tomb, a high-level Ghost type, I bring, because it just tanks really well, I bring a Spirit Tomb, I bring a Quagsire, and I bring a Catching Pokemon, a Soak Pokemon, like all these sort of utility things. You just kind of grab one of everything per shunt, even if you don't necessarily need it for that specific hunt. It can be nice and just a mental safety thing. Next up, number nine is going to be one I show off in my PC because I have so many of them and it really shows you how many you might need. Synchronize Pokemon. These are used for catch events, for farming for Pokeyen, and for shiny hunt that you can see. I literally have a synchronized Pokemon for most of the natures. Uh, Adamant, Careful, this one's Bold, I believe. Different Pokemon, different Shinies, you want different natures on. Modest, Jolly, Naive. We see here we have Relaxed. Some of these might just be, you know, Impish, Quiet, Brave. Pretty much every single nature is going to be useful for some sort of Shiny Hunt. Aside from the neutral natures, you're never going to need anything. You're never going to want to get a Pokemon that's uh, quirky, for example. You don't want any of the neutral natures ever, and usually you don't want lax or gentle. You, but you almost want to have every single other nature, a synchronized Pokemon for every single other nature that isn't lax, gentle, or a neutral nature is a really cool Pokemon to collect and have and really useful. All right, next up, number 10, and I will actually have an honorable mention after this, so we're not done quite yet, but I recommend having a high-level Pokemon with different types of AoE moves. So we're looking at Earthquake, Rampardos here. We've got Discharge, Magnezone, Water Spout, Blastoise. All of these different types of Pokemon work. Uh, we've got a Surf, a Starmie. All these are high-level, level 100. Uh, Eruption, Typhlosion. And then finally, one of the best ones that I recommend getting, Pikachu. Lightball Pikachu with Discharge. It can learn Surf on top of it. Sweet Send, so you can kill the Pokemon in the horde that you're summoning with the pokemon that is super good for space in the party uh really pikachu is your best option surf discharge sweet scent shout out to aben bag for sending me this uh you can put another hm move you could put fly or rock smash or something else on pikachu as well there's tons of things you can do pikachu is actually a wildly like helpful and beneficial aoe killer pokemon now if you don't know what i mean by that aoe just means area of effect all of the moves that i mentioned hit those times five horde Pokemon that I was talking about, and they're incredibly useful and needed for XP training and EV training. So definitely keep those in mind and getting tons of different ones for different moves. Certain spots, you're just not going to be like, if you, go, if you need to go do special defense EV training and you go over to Tenacruel, you're not going to be able to kill those with like Surf. Even with a level 100 Pokemon, it's not enough damage. Uh, but Discharge will be able to, or Earthquake, for example. It just really, really, really depends You'll need different types of AoE moves for different locations. 
All right, and for our last pick in honorable mention, a super quick and easy one is going to be a flame body Pokemon. These you want to put in the front of your party, and they will use the flame body ability, which makes eggs hatch faster. This is useful for egg shiny hunts, of course. This is useful for breeding for profit. If you ever want to hatch any egg, even like the egg from the storyline, like Togepi, having a flame body Pokemon is literally going to have the time. It's that important. It's going to save 50% of your time, and it's definitely worth doing. If you want to find a flame body Pokemon for cheap, you can head to the GTL, go to advanced search, go to more filters, go to has ability, and then type flame body search lowest price. There's tons of them for wicked, wicked cheap. If you just want any Pokemon, getting a shiny one is always a nice flex, or maybe one that has another utility purpose, like one of the ones we talked about previously in this video. But there we go. That is the end of it. Top 10 pick one that everyone should have within Pokemon. Hopefully this video was helpful. Hopefully it gave you some sort of idea that you didn't have already. If it did, make sure to leave a like on the video. Dislike if maybe it didn't. Subscribe to the channel for daily Pokemon videos I upload every single day, as well as stream Monday through Thursday at 12 p.m. ET on Twitch and YouTube down below. My Discord's links down below as well if you want to ask me questions or just sort of learn more about the game. There's tons of great resources and great people in that Discord. And if you want to go above and beyond and uh, support my channel, support my daily content creation, YouTube memberships, Twitch Primes, Twitch subs, and PayPal slash Venmo is wildly appreciated, never needed, but does help me out a ton, allows me to make more videos, more content, more guides, and stream for longer. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. I will see you guys later, and good luck in Pokemon. Hey, thank you so much for watching until the very end of the video. Hopefully it was a positive asset on your day in some way. And thank you to everyone's name who's on this list, who is a massive positive asset to my day every single day. I appreciate you all. Thank you for going above and beyond and allowing me to do what I do.